Cornwall Council has been looking at plans to force residents away from areas with high levels of air pollution because it could be cheaper than building bypasses. It might come as a surprise to learn that Cornwall has smog problems, but the county has several areas which fail to meet national air quality targets. Camelford in one such, is one such place. BBC Radio Cornwall's reporter Tamsin Melville has been asking people there what they think of the idea. Well, I don't think it's a very good idea. Some areas, they ought to deal with the pollution first and then leave people where they are. They've been fighting for a bypass since 1920 something. They've got to deal with the problem instead of shifting people around and spending lots of money buying houses they don't have to buy. Don't see the point really. What do you think should be done instead? Build a bypass. Should have done it years ago, years and years ago. Yeah, that would be a good idea. <laughs> So rather than moving the people, the road. definitely build a road. Yeah, around the buildings are all discoloured. Are they going to build more houses? Are they? I mean, the infrastructure of Camelford, I don't think they can take it anyway. School's not big enough. Sewage systems aren't good enough. You know, so I don't quite know whether that would work. So what would be the best way to deal with air pollution? Jeff Brown is Cornwall Council's Liberal Democrat Cabinet Minister for Communities. Tom Burke is the founding director of E3G, an environmental think tank, and also a former government advisor on the environment. Um, so, um, Jeff Brown, I know this is just one of the options you're looking at, but it seems pretty drastic even to consider the idea of forcing people to move house. Well, you, you mentioned in the, in the item that uh, you're quite surprised that Cornwall's got air quality issues, and the uh, majority of Cornwall is fantastic air quality, which is why we're one of the main holiday destinations in the UK. But we have very specific issues, particularly in pinch points, and Camelford is a good example where there's a pinch point in the traffic with a lot of heavy goods using the road, and the diesel engines are generating, where they're being held by traffic lights, generating that air pollution which we need to, to try and address. And if, Tom Burke, that is really dangerous um, for people and, and children uh, as well, isn't this kind of drastic action worth looking at? I deeply understand the frustration that the councillor feels. This is a, 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 the consequence of complete failure by the government to tackle a problem it's known about for a long time. It's now in breach of our own laws uh, about controlling air pollution, and it's known about that and done nothing. Even though client has succeeded in a high court action, for them to come up with a plan. But on this particular idea of compulsory purchase? Well, well but it, it addresses the wrong end of the problem. You can't blame the people and make the people pay uh, for a problem that's a failure of government. I do understand the frustration. It's not just in, in uh, Cornwall. It's in Birmingham. It's in London. You've got councils that are being dumped with a problem by a failure of the government to take an action it knows it should take. Jeff Brown, why not uh, try to build a bypass instead of this? That is certainly another option. We, we've got a huge range of options. We've, we asked our officers to come up with a clean air strategy and we asked them to, to exclude nothing, uh, which is why the compulsory purchase option is still in there. But it would be an absolute last resort. We've had some great success in other towns where we've had issues where traffic lights have held traffic. We've put in intelligent traffic light systems and the air quality has improved dramatically. Uh, we could also look at... Um, working with fleet operators because it, the vast majority of the air pollution is coming from heavy goods vehicles. Uh, we can look at f working with fleet operators to try and reroute uh, fleets and uh, and yeah. be more efficient. Tom Burke, are there other things that, I mean, you've been critical of government, uh, national government, but there are other things that councils could do, local government? Well, there are lots of things to clearing clean air zones there, are, as the councillor says. Uh, the local councils are trying really hard to deal with the problem that where they can and where they can make a difference at the margin lots of councils are doing that in exactly the way he was describing the problem is now getting the state where you've got to spend millions on a bypass you're getting beyond what local councils can be really expected to do when you're compulsory purchasing order to move people away from uh, the pollution you're going beyond what local councils can do so there are lots of local councils who should be applauded for what they're doing but they can't make up for the failures of central government and jeff brown isn't it up to people themselves to decide whether they want to take the risk of living in an area with heavy air pollution rather than being forced out of their own homes. Absolutely. We, we wouldn't do anything without detailed consultation with the local community. But I, I agree with Tom uh, that in hindsight, the government shouldn't have pushed people to, to use diesel vehicles in the, in the first instance and we now need to resurrect a campaign to try and persuade people to change back to more uh, less pollutant free vehicles.
But that's a difficult thing, isn't it, Tom Burton? People have actually paid for those cards and have been encouraged to buy them. Well, but also the motor industry cheated uh, on, on the air quality test standards, so you can't go on blaming the people for a problem that government really does need to address. We, we have the technologies to produce vehicle, all the mobility people want, without uh, killing them and incidentally adding to the burden on the health service. We have the technology to do that, but government has to set a lead. It's failing to do it. On diesels, we could be shifting them over to liquid petroleum gas to get rid of that particular problem. Tom Burke, Jeff Brown, thank you both. Pleasure.